Hey, Mike from my techie here, here to show you on how to do a countdown timer. Now, you've seen them all the time on the web, you've seen them everywhere, you know, if, whether they be Flash, whether they be JavaScript, whatever they be. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a useful thing that people like to do with countdowns to birthdays or whatever it be. So I'm going to show you a really simple countdown timer. Now, you guys can go ahead and, of course, elaborate this and, and, and start you know, doing whatever you wish for your own websites, but this is a quick, easy timer that you can you can control with your space bar, and hopefully uh, y you enjoy it. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is create an actions layer, and also a layer one. I've I've already pre-coded this by the way, so I only got 10 minutes because of YouTube. So um, the layer one, I went ahead and just drew a text object on with the text tool, and then I na named that text object counter with dynamic text. Okay, so I now, if I expand here, I'm going to go to lay the actions layer. If I expand the actions layer, you're going to notice I have three variables right at the top. Now, because I, and you're going to notice that one is data types, but the other two are not. The other two is because I'm either inserting it into text or multiplying it later on. And unfortunately, if you data type as a number, you can't just equate it to text. You have to do some conversions and stuff, which I didn't feel like doing. So, here is total sex, and as you can see right here, I equate it to the counter.txt down below. So I don't want to go ahead and data type that. And the same thing with countdown sex, I, I do it right here. So countdown sex is basically the placeholder uh, where it's going to be constantly updating. Uh, the total seconds, of course, is the control variable uh, that you're going to be using for how many seconds you want to count down from. Um, and then the countdown incrementer, which is uh, I should have said decrementer uh, uh, because that's really what you're doing. Uh, but the countdown incrementer decrementer um, right here, the number that you're going to be decreasing the countdown by <laughs> is right here, and you can change that value either way. Most time, people count down by one or by two, you know, whatever we wish. So uh, here we're going to go ahead and so we establish the variable of the countdown, and you know I'm just going to change this to countdown deck. Just for the heck of it, because it doesn't make sense. Alright. So I just went ahead and replaced these. And so right now we're gonna go ahead and we establish that number. So here we can establish it equals to one. We data typed it as well as number. Then we set, take our second variable of total seconds of the entire amount of time that we want to count down by. We go ahead and establish that. And then we just simply say the variable of the countdown seconds is going to be equal to the total seconds that we have originally. So we're going to also update right away so that we can see on our screen what the current countdown seconds is because we want to know what we're going to be counting down by or from. So that way we go ahead and tell the people, hey, you're, you're counting down from 10 in this case. So we're going to go ahead and create a new time object. So we start the little variable time and we're going to say uh, we're going to data type it to a timer is equal to a new timer, and we're going to take the countdown decrementer, so what we're, we're counting down by, and we're going to multiply it by a thousand, because we're going to be counting down by seconds, and we're not counting down by milliseconds, which is what the timer accepts into its function. So time, and we're going to go to add an event listener. So we go to time.addEventListener. We're listening for a timer event, and we're listening for the timer method. And, and what, what we're really listening to, therefore, is that clicking. So every time it basically does that second or whatever it's being told to do, um, it's going to go ahead and, and basically do a click. Now, I just called the function tick. So right here we're going to start the function, function tick. We're listening for an event of a timer event, and we're not going to re be returning anything, so no need to put that. So we're going to put void. So if the countdown of countdown six equals to zero, so if we're, we're saying if this placeholder is equal to zero, then I want you to go ahead and say countdown is complete, and I want you to stop the timer. And I could have r wrote a thing in there saying if the timer is running, go ahead and stop it. I didn't get very specific in here, so it can error theoretically. Uh, this is very very minor app, so to those realists out there who, who are going to be nitpicking this, understand I under I didn't write all the code. I only got ten minutes, so uh, to explain. So time I'm going to stop the timer here, and a countdown sex equals to to the total seconds and we're going to go ahead and do it there. So now the reason why I do this is because I'm going to update it again if I ever go to start it. So and right here you're going to notice that I go and display that later on and so that way if I go to update it it's going to go ahead and show that number. Okay. So here we're going to say if it if it's equal to zero go ahead and stop it. If it's not and tell 
tell the people in the output panel that it's complete, so the developer that's complete. Now, and if the user's just going to see it zero, it's going to stop at zero, and that's going to be it. So else, I want to go and take the countdown seconds, the current placeholder. I'm going to equate it to whatever the current placeholder has right now, and then minus the decrementer. Okay. So then we're going to go and update that text object with the current seconds, the current placeholder. And then, of course, we need a way to start the timer. Now, I could I could have just started up here, but then I have a problem where it loops, and I don't want it to loop if I want to stop it, so on and so forth. So I just created a simple event listener listening for the space key on, on, on the stage. So if you look right here, we have stage .add event listener. I'm listening for a keyboard event of key down. If the, if the key down is pressed, it's going to go talk to the start timer uh, function. That function is going to go ahead and listen for a keyboard event. We're not going to return anything on that function. And I'm going to say, if the key code, if the event that's being passed to me, and, the key is, and which is, of course, the keyboard event, and the keyboard event's key code is equal to 32, which is the space bar, I want to go ahead and say, if the time is running, if the time object is running, so if the time dot running equals to true, then I'm going to trace already running and not do a thing. Else, I want to go ahead and take the counter dot text, I'm going to set it equate to the total seconds, so I'm basically resetting the timer, and then I'm going to go ahead and start the timer again. Okay, so simple as that, and so we're going to go ahead and run this just to show you what it looks like. So as you can see, 10 shows up. It's not going to start until I hit my space bar. So here I go, space bar, and it starts counting down. Now notice, remember what I said, it's, when it gets to the end, we're going to have two things happen. We're going to have a trace output, and then we're going to also have a zero showing to the customer or to the person. So as you can see, the client sees zero if it was just on the web, but we uh, in the development platform see the countdown is complete. Okay. So now if we go back to this, you notice that we, if we hit the space bar, it's going to reset, and it's going to start the timer over again. Now you can also throw a toggle function in there if you hit space, it pauses and it stops it and all that. Um, again, this was only a quick 10-minute video, so I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions on comments, please leave them below. I'll be more happy to respond, and I hope this hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.